Hi, everybody. Wow, today is Friday, May the 8th. I cannot believe it's here. The last official day that we're getting together as a whole group. So I have something in store for you today. We're not gonna talk about bronze bow. We're gonna read a poem. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and uh, show you a poem that's uh, written by one of my favorite authors. You have probably heard of Shel Silverstein. Shel Silverstein is a guy that um, when he was going to school as a, a child, he couldn't really relate because he couldn't play sports very well. He was a little uncoordinated. He didn't want to hang out with the girls either. Um, so he started taking interest in writing and found a niche uh, in poetry, uh, making his own style. And he's, he's one of the most famous authors. And whenever we're, fu we're finding um, material for uh, competition for PSIA or for Tixit to use, um, especially with humorous poems, um, Shel Silverstein poetry is our often go-to because he's constantly writing more and more of them. He's pretty funny. So here's one that I'm gonna share with you if you could read along with me. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door with bacon rinds, and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits and orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black fern butter toast, grisly bits of beefy roasts, the garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bumblegum, cellophane from green baloney, rubbery, blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dry, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last, the garbage reached so high that it finally <clears throat> touched the sky and all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. And finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate. And there in the garbage, she did hate. Poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate because the hour is much too late. But children, remember Sarah Stout and always take the garbage out. So that's the end of that poem. I want to just come up to um, some of these lines here. I want to take this apart for you. If you'll notice some of the things that um, Shel Silverstein likes to do, and he likes alliteration. I don't know if you remember what alliteration is. You studied it in sixth grade this year. That's when you have a, a technique in writing where you make word sounds 
with the same beginning sound. So you see brown bananas. And then um, look at this one. <clears throat> you probably pick them out. Prune pits, peach pits. You feel that p sound? Because he's emphasizing gloppy glumps. And then um, here we go. Greasy napkins, globs of gooey bubblegum. Rubbery, blubbery. What else does he do? So um, what might be Sarah's awful fate? It doesn't say, does it? The poet leaves that to our imagination. So is she eventually buried in the trash? Um, does she starve to death? Ooh. Does the garbage block out the sun and she ends up freezing to death in this winter time? What's the theme of the poem? Is the theme about what can happen to food if you let it sit around? Mm, no. Is it about how trash can build up? Mm, not really. Perhaps the theme is to obey your parents and do what they say and complete your chores when you're asked to do that. So that's an example of a fun poem. And since this is gonna be my last Zoom video that you get to watch from me for a lesson, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for um, tuning in to me uh, and some of you that I had all year for reading. I enjoyed having you in my class, and I'm so sorry that this year ended up so disjointed in this semester, and that's not something we intended. We really wanted to get into some other literature, really wanted to get into Call It Courage. That's a real good book to read. I also wanted to really let you um, get into um, The Golden Goblet, and that's a wonderful book to read as well. I would encourage you to check it out this summer. See about finding a golden goblet and, a, and call it courage. They're, they're uh, not recent books. They've been up for a while. And read them this summer. Um, golden Goblet has a lot of similar qualities to the one we just read. So um, I want to thank you for letting me be your teacher this year. And for those of you with um, Miss Jones' class, thank you for letting me be your teacher just these last few weeks. I am retiring at the end of this year. I'm hanging up my hat as a teacher at BCS. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm dropping out of sight forever. Um, I'll be involved with different things once in a while as a volunteer. But I just want to thank you for everything. And I want to wish you luck this summer. I wish you luck this coming year as a seventh grader. It will be a complete different feel than it has been for sixth grade. Believe me. Um, as a sixth grader, uh, it's just it's like day and night from sixth to seventh. And I noticed my, my um, current seventh graders, when they came back in the fall to start their seventh grade year, it was like they were complete different students. Um, they were just much more mature and, and uh, felt more confident in themselves. And you're gonna find that to be true as well. You're gonna get taller during the summer. And uh, some of you boys might start feeling like your voice is starting to change a little bit and girls are gonna get taller. So it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful time for you and your year as a seventh grader at Brentwood is going to be so very special. You need to know that it's a good year to be a Brentwood bear when you're seventh grade. It is every year, but it's just very special. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So thank you for letting me teach you and I'll talk to you soon.